Shabbat Shalom to the saints. Today's topic is, who is the leader of the Amanazareta or Nazarenes? Hoshea's 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children." Unquote. On page 171 of Advocate Miando's book titled Isinchumelo Zenkosi Langa, Sermons by His Holiness Lord Galili Shembe, says, The narrative on Shembe is very profound, fellow Amanazareta. Maybe there will emerge among you some children who are courageous and meticulous enough to analyze it. Among us, as the clergy, nobody is both meticulous and courageous enough to sit back and study this phenomenal narrative. In my opinion, we are still groping in the darkness and we do not fully understand this narrative on Shembe because he did not write it down except the liturgical prayers and hymns. But he did not fully unpack the core truths around the Amanazareta faith. Again, on page 128 of Advocate Mnyando's book titled Inkos Inyanga Ezulu, His Holiness Lord Amos Shembe says, I am saying to you, there will emerge knowledgeable and meticulous persons who will thoroughly articulate your profound faith system analyzing its core message. We are not fully conversant with it. We just know how to keep the Shabbat. There are those who will carefully analyze Shembe's phenomenal narrative. We will enter heaven, fellow Nazarenes, if we live according to Shembe's holy precepts. Unquote. On page 82 of the earlier book, Lord Galili Shembe says, this Shembe who rekindled this Ubu Nazareta was not a mere mortal. He descended from heaven. But he was not coming here on earth for the first time. He would establish this profound faith system and live with a conviction that it will flourish. Then after his departure, there will emerge people who are just like me who would claim to be the leaders even if they do not have Shembe spirit and divert this faith system from its original course, turning it upside down in accordance with their own weakness." Unquote. Nowadays, there are priests who are doctoral scholars within Ubu Nazareta faith system, focusing more even on religious histories. Therefore, right now, we need to ensure that Lord Galili Shembe's desire and Lord Amos Shembe's prediction come true. Within the concept of a faith system that is conducted according to the provisions of the Torah, we should carefully reconsider whether we are still following Yahuwah's system that was brought among us by Prophet Moshe. We should not accept anything that is claimed by the Gentiles about the history of our faith system without researching on its authenticity. In conducting a research into the histories of religions, I discover that approximately 85% of what we have been taught by the Gentiles is not true. Here I've used mostly the Jewish Bible because it contains historical origins of the Almighty God's faith system. I would like to clarify that the foundation of the Nazarite's faith is observing Yahuwah's law, which he gave to Moshe. It is therefore a continuation of Judaism. I have also used a few books written by white religious history scholars. 
In this research, I intended to discover the real truth about the name of Miriam's son. In Matthew 1 verse 21 of the Jewish Bible, it reads thus, She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Yeshua. Unquote. In the introduction of the Jewish Bible, it reads thus, the original Jewish form of Messiah's name, Yeshua, is used in this Bible instead of the Gentiles' known translation. But it's not how he was known to his family, friends, and first century followers. To them, he was Yeshua, a Hebrew name meaning salvation. Unquote. Thus continues the introduction of the Jewish Bible. This Bible contains information from Jewish sources to explain a thoroughly Jewish book, the Bible, written by Jews, about Jews, initially for Jews in the Jewish land of Israel. Unquote. Our scholars were not supposed to contend on such truth about the name of Yeshua, the son of Miriam, because Yeshua was a Judean and was under the Judean faith system. What we were supposed to ask ourselves is, since the name of Miriam's son was Yeshua in Aramaic, so who changed this name? Why was it changed to a Gentile language? The challenge is that even when our people have been educated, they often accept anything that they are taught by the Gentiles. What we should know is that when the Gentiles slaughtered the Judeans in 70 AD, they later distorted the Hebrew scriptures so that they would conform to their religion. They used hegemonic power and treachery to confiscate our economy and faith system. Miriam's son, who died around 33 AD, was, for the rest of his life, known as Yeshua. The name that was fabricated by the Gentiles emerged long after the death of Yeshua. Therefore, it does not belong to Yeshua, the son of Miriam, but it belongs to some dude from a Gentile nation. If Temba lives and dies as a Zulu man, and then someone called Hope emerges within a certain foreign nation after some years. The latter just cannot become the former. In order to defend our faith system, we should thoroughly investigate the origins of the erasure of Yeshua's name by the Gentiles. Historically, in 78 AD, the Gentiles attacked and slaughtered about 600,000 Judeans and destroyed Yahuwah's temple in Jerusalem. After the defeat of the Judeans, the Gentiles did away with Yahuwah and his law, the core of Israelite's faith system. The notion that Yeshua, who was obviously a Judean, could abandon his own faith system and nation in order to become a savior of Yeshua's enemies simply does not make sense, unless that Yeshua was just a wooden god. We all know that when foreign powers have subjugated you, they alter your name and replace it with theirs, just as ours will be changed and replaced by those from a pagan religion. It is a well-known historical fact that when the Judeans had been subdued, Hebrew names were changed to a Gentile language. The names of Yahuwah, Yeshua, Shaul, the Nazarenes or Nazarites, the Messiah, and many more were erased from Gentile scripture. Today in Gentile scriptures, Yeshua and Shaul have been given Gentile names. Similarly, the Nazarenes have been given a Gentile name, while that of Messiah has also been changed to a Hellenic name. On page 62 of Dr. Costa's book titled, come out of here, my people. It reads thus. The Gentiles wanted a savior, but not a Jewish one. 
They looted the Jews. They even looted the Elohim of the Old Testament. Thus a Hellenized Savior was preferred. We fully concur with Dr. Costas regarding this explanation. Because one cannot annihilate a nation, destroy its temple, do away with its faith system, and, after wrecking all that havoc, then adopt its prophet and make him their savior. Obviously, as even Dr. Costa posits, the new fictitious name of Yeshua, which had been distorted, emerged after the invention of the pagan religion. That is exactly why the names of Yahuwah and Yeshua are not to be seen in the scriptures of the Gentiles. Costa's explanation clarifies how the name of Yeshua, the Judean, was changed in accordance with the Gentile religion. Any person who has read the history of the conquest of the Judeans by the Gentiles can understand that Yeshua's name was finally altered into a pagan version for a person who never existed. Though today we are not focusing on this subject, but the Hebrews that we are referring to are blacks, specifically descended from Shem. The Gentiles fraudulently did away with the Savior, whose name is Yeshua using Hebrew scriptures to present a fictitious Savior to whom the legacy of our Savior was attributed. That is a total plagiarism. Such treasury resulted in us being convinced that we are following the Savior who is the Son of God, whereas we are worshipping other gods. Gentiles know that when we still worshipped Yahuwah, we were never dominated by them. Therefore, they are doing this so that we may never know about Yahuwah's commands anymore, so that when Yahuwah abandons us, we may remain their slaves. We said the topic of the sermon is, Who is the leader of the Amma Nazareta or Nazarenes? On page 86 of Myandu's book, his Holiness Lord Galili Shembe says, Nazareth faith system is not on earth for the first time. It also came upon Moshe, Yeshua, and the prophets, but it came to naught. One such as Shembe would arrive and ignite it, and his successor would just fail to keep the Nazareth faith. Unquote. On page 10 of the book of Rav Shaul, who is also Jewish, titled the Nazarene, betrayed, beaten, and begotten, it reads thus. Today Nazarenes are once again coming to the forefront of the religious thought. Many are beginning to realize that the followers of the Messiah were called Nazarenes and were never called by the pagan name. With modern discoveries such as the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is a collection of over 800 texts dating back to the time just before Yeshua was born and into the first century, we are learning more about the sect of the Nazarenes that follow Yeshua. Unquote. On page 25 of this book, it reads thus, We know that the Nazarene sect was established by the great prophet John the Baptist who was given the way of salvation by Yah. John's role was to instruct and mentor the Messiah in the office of high priest and teach Yeshua the way. We know then that Yeshua took over as the leader of the Nazarenes from John. Yeshua led the early Nazarenes. And Shaul, the apostle, then took over and became the leader of the Nazarenes." Of course, it has been slightly revealed in Acts 24 verse 5 that Apostle Shaul was the leader of the Nazarenes. But the fact that he had inherited that leadership role from Yeshua has been hidden from us. Since all Hebrew names were done away with and replaced with pagan ones, 
The Messiah's name was also changed by the Gentiles. In the Jewish Bible, Acts 11 verse 26, we read that Yeshua's followers, as he was called the Messiah, were called the Messianics. But when this was translated to Gentile languages, it sounded completely different. When the apostle came out of Jerusalem in order to proselytize the Gentiles, they were under the Messianic faith system, which is now known as Judaism. At that time, the Gentile religion was not yet in existence. People should understand that in Yahuwah's faith system, we have Yeshua who was the leader of the Nazarenes. In order to avoid being condemned to eternal damnation due to lack of knowledge, we should closely follow the history of Yahuwah's faith system. The last prophet to lead the Nazarene was Yeshua after whom the faith system was destroyed by the Gentiles until it was reignited by Prophet Isa Shembe. Today, Yahuwah has re-established the Nazareth faith. Lord Amos Shembe, in his analysis of the Nazareth faith system, says that if we observe Yahuwah's commandments, which have today been restored through Shembe, we shall enter heaven, fellow Nazareth.